Good Tuesday morning, Utah. The time is currently 715. We're going to begin with your weather headlines, which are similar to yesterday, but we're going to crank up the temperature just a little bit more. So we're going to be within record territory today. Going to have strong southerly winds, but because of the high sun angle, the warm temperatures, we still have those avalanche concerns, and in fact, they've been expanded. Meanwhile, as we make our way towards the second half of this work week, we will see some cooler temperatures and honestly, it's probably going to be a good thing to see those cooler temperatures to help stabilize the snow a little bit. But let's go ahead and go back in time to just this time last week on April 4th of 2023. The high temperature in Salt Lake City was 33 degrees. We saw eight and eight and a half inches of new snow for today. The forecast at high is 80 degrees. The record high for today in Salt Lake City 80 degrees that was set back in 1934. So we're going to be squarely in record territory. We'll talk more of those details in just a moment, but the avalanche concerns again, they do stick around. The avalanche warning that we've been talking about the last couple of days has been extended through six o'clock in the morning on Thursday, but has been expanded to now include the Western Uintas, the Wasatch Plateau and Book Cliffs and the Central Mountains. This not only includes the mountains, but this includes the foothills as well. Avoid any slopes over 30 degrees. Stay clear of any avalanche runouts and make sure you're taking those necessary precautions if you are planning on going into the backcountry today. But honestly, it's probably a better idea to avoid the backcountry. Now with the warmer temperatures, also come the concerns of flooding. The only flood watch that we currently have is in Northeast Nevada. We do not have any active flood watches, warnings or advisories in Utah, Southeastern Idaho or Southwestern Wyoming. However, some rivers will be running high, swift and cold enhanced runoff in the lower elevations. Again, that could cause its own set of issues. Slot canyons may become inundated with runoff, so make sure you're avoiding those backcountry hazards, especially in Southern Utah. So if you're heading to any of the mighty five, you probably want to avoid the slot canyons as we're seeing that runoff. But for what you could do, clear any deep snow from foundations and clear those drainage paths to help mitigate your risk of seeing flooding. As we take a current look outside, this is the view from Brian Head. Going to be another bluebird day and spring skiing will be in full effect. That's a beautiful view from Brian Head. Then as we make our way into northern Utah, Swanner Preserve in Park City looking stunning this morning, already past sunrise, but still a lot of snow there on the ground. And those temperatures in Park City it's mild. It's 48 degrees right now in the Wasatch back. We're sitting at 58 degrees in Salt Lake. That's a pretty warm start to the morning. And in fact, in Salt Lake, we're actually warmer than we are currently in St. George. So no matter where you are, it's definitely milder compared to what we got used to, but it's going to be another great day to take your dog for a walk, especially if you have a good girl like Stella Rose right now sitting in the upper 50s in Salt Lake will be in the upper 60s by 11 o'clock this morning. So maybe a great day to eat lunch outside. And then by 3 o'clock this afternoon, upper 70s in Salt Lake, all before possibly getting to that 80 degree temperature. That's what we're going to go with that daytime high in Salt Lake City with most along the Wasatch front, seeing daytime highs in the mid to upper 70s. But look at the Wasatch back, 63 in Park City, 68 in Hebert, and then in the Uinta Basin, a daytime high of 69 in Duchesne, 69 in Roosevelt, and then in Vernal, we could see a daytime high in the low to mid 60s as well. We'll see more 70s and 80s as you make your way into Central and in Southern Utah, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, breezy conditions across the board. 84 in Lake Powell may be a great day to get out on the boat. 89 in St. George, 72 in Parowin, and a daytime high of 65 degrees in Bryce Canyon. So let's go ahead and begin the future cast. High pressure keeping our weather quiet, but that high pressure to our east, a cold front to our west, helping accelerate those southern southwesterly winds as we go through today. This cold front will slide in as we go from tonight into tomorrow. This will help drag down the temperature slightly for our Wednesday. We'll also see increased cloud coverage. The winds will be sticking around and you can see this little dip right here. That's a trough coming in from the northwest. And by the time we get into Thursday, as that trough moves in, it's going to bring us the chance for seeing some wet weather, mainly in the northern two thirds of the state and in eastern Utah. And after the cold front really moves through, we're going to see significantly colder temperatures and there will be the chance that we could see some of that valley rain transition over into some snow in spots. Now, not likely going to see anything significant in our valleys, but that just kind of goes to show how much cooler the air is going to get behind the cold front. In St. George, we'll be looking at upper 80s for today, middle 80s tomorrow. Then it's low 70s Thursday into Friday, a little bit more cloud coverage, but looking mostly dry down in St. George. But by the late latter half of the weekend into early next week, we'll see daytime highs back in the 80s. Then along the Wasatch front near 80 degrees today, only in the 50s tonight, low 70s for our Wednesday, bringing that chance for mainly Valley rain and mountain snow on our Thursday, breezy conditions on Friday, but then those daytime highs after dropping to near 50 on Thursday will be back in the low 70s by early next week.